Hello there, fifth graders, and welcome to your next history lesson. Who were the people living in the early United States? Part two, early American Indians, American Indians in the early Republic. Many American Indians during this period saw white settlers as a threat. For more than 150 years, they had seen settlers stream west into their territory. This threatened their land and their way of life. In 1787, Congress passed the Northwest Ordinance. The law was intended to outline how the Western Territory should be governed and the rules for becoming a state. It also included a promise that Indian lands and territories would never be taken away from them. However, this promise was not kept. In 1794, eight American Indian groups joined together to drive settlers out of their land in what is today Ohio. They were defeated by the United States Army at the Battle of Fallen Timbers in Northwest Ohio. The next year, these American Indians had to accept the Treaty of Greenville. This treaty forced them to give up most of their land in the Ohio Territory. However, some, some American Indians would continue to resist the settlers. One of the, one of the American Indians who remained in Ohio and had not signed the Treaty of Greenville was Tecumseh of the Shawnee people. Tecumseh hoped to regain some of the lost Indian territory in what is now Ohio and Indiana. He tried to unite all Western native peoples to fight against invading settlers. William Henry Harrison, who was the governor of the Indiana Territory, became alarmed at Tecumseh's growing power. In 1811, Harrison attacked and destroyed Tecumseh's community. Tecumseh and the Shawnees were among the first were among the American Indian groups who sided with the British in the War of 1812. Native peoples hoped that a British victory would stop U.S. settlers from coming into their territories. Tecumseh was eventually killed in 1813 while fighting for the British. African Americans in the early United States. By 1804, all northern states had outlawed slavery. That means slavery had become illegal. However, even though slavery was outlawed in these states, African Americans still faced discrimination there. In Ohio, Indiana, and Illinois, laws were passed requiring African Americans to show papers proving that they were free. In the southern states, slavery was still legal. On large farms called plantations, hundreds of slaves were forced to work without pay. In the mid-1800s, the composition of the U.S. population began to change dramatically. More immigrants came to the United States between 1845 and 1860 than ever before. Many Europeans came to find work. Some Chinese came in the 1840s to seek fortunes. Later, they worked on the railroads. The Irish, however, left their homeland for a very different reason. In the mid-1800s, many people in Ireland were forced by British property owners to plant and eat potatoes and little else. Most of the livestock and other food they raised went to England or was sold to pay their high rents. Depending on only one crop proved disastrous. Starting in 1846, potatoes throughout Ireland did not grow because of a plant disease involving fungus. Because of this, between 1846 and 1861, a million Irish people immigrated to the United States to escape starvation. Before the wave of Irish immigrants coming to U.S. shores, almost all U.S. citizens were Protestant Christians. The influx of Irish immigrants resulting from the potato famine drastically increased the number of Catholic Christians in the United States. The 1820s and 1830s is often called the Canal Age. It was during this period, period that the construction of several major canals filled the transportation needs of the young country. One of the largest such projects was the construction of the Erie Canal, which we learned about before. <laughs> Irish, German, and English immigrants did most of the back of the backbreaking work required to build these canals. The work was often difficult and dangerous. Many of the workers died from accidents and disease. 
Later, when the canal work was done, some immigrants settled in towns and cities along the canal. Others decided to seek their fortunes by traveling west. I hope you enjoyed this history lesson. Make sure you click on the, um, on the assignment attached under this video, and I will see you next time. Signing off.